Commissioner's Week continues here on Midwest Sportsnet, and it is a privilege to be joined today by Dustin Wilkie, who is the conference commissioner for the Sun Conference, headquartered in Tampa, Florida. Commissioner, thank you so much for taking some time to be with us here today. I, I always enjoy promoting, of course, the Sun Conference has so many things that are going on, but let me ask you first, as a conference commissioner, I mean, you oversee a lot of things. How do you see your role as a commissioner? Yeah, uh, well, it's it's a lot of things, Joey. And, and by the way, thank you for having me. We appreciate all you do to uh, support and promote what we're doing, especially at the small college level where uh, we don't have as many eyeballs at us at the time, but certainly a lot of great things happening, just like you see at the, the D1s, Power 5. So we appreciate all you do, and, and thank you again for having me. Uh, you know, the commissioner role is is uh, different every day, I like to say. So it's hard to pinpoint one thing, but, um, you know, uh, I think that um, when you when you think about what our presidents, what our athletic directors, coaches, student athletes uh, expect out of a commissioner, I think it's providing a vision for what we want this conference to be, uh, and all that entails setting that those goals, priorities, um, and making sure that they have uh, the resources that they need from the conference office to be able to. Um, affect that mission and, and move in the same direction so that we're creating the best environment possible for most importantly our student athletes but all those constituents i mentioned uh fans parents uh we want everyone to have an environment that they're comfortable in and, and are attracted to so uh, i think that's that's a big part of the the big picture of what a what my job is um i mentioned providing resources we want to add value in any way we can to our members um, through the conference office, whether that's promoting them, um, you know, giving them different ideas and tools that they can utilize on their own campuses. Um, obviously, upholding standards that we've all set and agreed to as a conference and making sure that everyone is following through with those is a big part of what the uh, commissioner role is as well. Um, yeah, and then, and then just providing support, you know, making sure that everyone has um, that connection to the conference office and to each other, um, you know, give them any, any sort of support that we can at the conference, at the campus level through the conference office. So again, it's, it's a lot of different things, but I think, you know, providing that leadership vision support, giving them the tools to succeed is what's uh, the conference office, not just the commissioner's role specifically, but all of us at the conference office um, try to do. Yeah, you you get to be the face for that, so that's that's right. that's pretty cool. I I know you served right. at the NAI National Office for a number of years prior to coming to the Sun Conference yeah. to take the lead position there. Were were there benefits or otherwise? I mean, you know, from coming from a national perspective, then and then coming to a more regional role, a conference role. Yeah, absolutely. I was very fortunate to spend uh, almost ten years at the NAI National Office. Uh, which certainly helped me moving from that uh, from that role into the commissioner role. You know, it, uh, I would say it's a lot of the same things that happen at the national office um, and in the the conference office, just at a, a little bit smaller scale. So, uh, what I what I tell a lot of people is that the national office uh, you have different departments uh, that handle all these different things: marketing, uh, communications, championships. Uh, budgeting, all that stuff at the, at the conference office, you're doing all of those things, but it's a little bit more condensed into one office, uh, mine and I guess Mary's. So, uh, you know, I've, I've benefited in, in every way possible being at the national office because I got to see how that office um, works, how the landscape of the NAIA sort of flows. Um, and there's just a lot of context that you can gain being in, in that system uh, that you can apply to the the conference level certainly and uh you know so it was the any an easier transition i think for me than maybe some others who have come from uh, other worlds outside of the naia or outside of athletics uh just because it had that context and certainly the relationships that i developed as well um with those in some still in the national office today um other commissioners at, at naia conferences around the country who i had previously been able to develop uh, strong relationships that I could count on to give advice and, and context and again, support um, as I made that transition and still many of those relationships uh, benefit me still today to um, 
you know, to figure out all of our, all of our issues that we deal with new ones popping up every day, certainly. But um, yeah, no, I think it's that context and those relationships that have been very beneficial for me throughout. Yeah. But it, I don't think you can overstate the importance of relationships because it, it is, and it, and it is what you're able to do, but sometimes it, it's who you know as well that, that can get you to the next step. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think, you know, a lot of people have similar stories to me, but I think when I decided to make the move from the NAI to the Sun Conference, um, that's what enticed me as well. I had, again, had built some of those previous relationships with individuals in the Sun Conference. Um, and that, I think, is what helped uh, pull me towards this job a little bit more so than others that I maybe have looked at just because I had a lot of respect for uh, what they were doing already in the Sun Conference, the people that were leading, it's, it's again, it's about relationships. You want to be in a position where you uh, believe in those around you and and have a common vision for what you want that, uh, that conference to be. And uh, I certainly felt that um, when I was when I was considering the Sun Conference job um, and still feel that today, obviously, we're very blessed with uh, great leaders at the pre presidential level, uh, at the athletic directors level, coaches uh, in the Sun Conference. That really makes my job pretty easy most of the time, uh, you know, because they do such a good job on their campus of of uh, taking care of business and and uh, providing that leadership. So, uh, very fortunate to have have developed those relationships over time that have, uh, have helped me along the way. Let's talk national championships. The Sun Conference has had its share already here in 2023-2024, which, by the way, uh, an and athletic year that is coming to an end this week. I mean, July just starting next week. I know there's something we can talk about that, too, with the growth there. Kaiser football, a national champion. Kaiser women's golf, national champion. Kaiser women's swimming and diving, national champion. St. Thomas men's swimming, diving, national champion. I mean, th these have been some highlights for the conference this year. Yeah, yeah, it's been a great year for us. Certainly, uh, we got off to a great start in the fall uh, with Kaiser football. The, you know, that was such a such a great game and uh, such a great environment getting to go against Northwestern, who had be beaten them the previous year in the championship. So uh, to see them get over that hump and you know they would they had been uh, ascending for quite a while. So to, for them to actually get it done was was great to see set us you know off on a as you mentioned a great year swimming and diving we had a great year st thomas uh, captured their first team national championship in school history so that was uh really awesome to see um you know kaiser's been dominant in, in swimming for a long time um so you know they they got another one but uh, st thomas is pushing them as well so um, that's been fun to see that rivalry sort of develop not only in our conference but at the national level also, and then uh, Kaiser Women's Golf, another story program who's been uh, successful for a long time. So, um, yeah, we've had, you know, those four and, and many others who uh, qualified for national championships and, and made great runs as well. So yeah, it's one of the one of the things that I appreciate most about the Sun Conference is the competitiveness and everyone's always really pushing one another to get better. And, and you know, the old saying, iron sharpens iron. I think we definitely see that in uh, in our conference and it benefits everyone at the end of the day, not only during the regular season pushing each other, but when they get to the national championship setting, uh, they've seen high level competition all year long. So uh, they're ready for it. And, and you see that in some of the successes that we've, we've had nationally. You know, I'm, I'm sure you're always proud to wear the, the sun conference cap whenever you get a chance to do it, but uh, it's probably nice walking around the events uh, championships when one one of the member schools comes away with the title and that we're visiting now with Dustin Wilkie yeah. who is the commissioner for the Sun Conference and I, I I would ask this about what you do I mean I was like talking about the positives in everything I mean I hope that's a hallmark of the channel here is to to bring those out what do you see is the most challenging part of your role yeah I mean there again different one every day but i think that if you're thinking big picture uh it's just get every getting everyone moving in the same direction on certain issues you know everyone uh, within our conference and every conference has a little bit different priorities and different missions so uh when we all come to the table together the everyone has a little bit different idea on how things should be done or the direction we should head so uh getting everyone to 
you know, move in that common direction, find a, a singular mission in certain areas, I think is, is sometimes a challenge. Um, you know, I think today it's just dealing with the constant changes that are coming to college athletics. Um, you know, it's, it's not what it was 10 years ago, as everyone knows, mm-hmm. um, you know, with the transfer stuff, the NIL stuff, it's, it's just a different environment. So trying to continually um, envision what might be coming next and be prepared for it as possible has been uh, particularly difficult, I think, as a commissioner and, and for anyone in college athletics over the last five to 10 years, just because uh, you can sort of anticipate some of these things that are coming, but some of them you just can't. And, um, you know, try to get yourself in the best position to uh, not only thrive, but survive moving forward has has been a particular challenge i think um, and i would guess you probably hear the same from most uh, <laughs> most others that you visited with as well well then let me let me go back let's 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 talk positive again I, I i guess that's not really a negative it's just it's it's something that you have to deal with in that but promoting and and promoting the sun conference learfield cup standings have been released recently four conference teams in the top 13 in the NAIA led by Kaiser, who was in that number three spot. But uh, that's also a, it's, that's a nice feather I'm sure as well for the conference. Yeah, no, it's, again, it's great to see our schools um, having so much success nationally. It certainly speaks to the level of competitiveness and the quality of the uh, institutions that we have. And uh, you know, Kaiser has, has been up there. They uh, won the cup several years ago, so it's uh, nothing new to them. Southeastern certainly has been uh, a key player at the national level for some time. SCAD Savannah as well. Uh, St. Thomas is, is a little bit newer. They've sort of come on in recent years and, um, have risen their level. So it's great to see them get into that, that top 10 to 15 as well. Um, uh, certainly, you know, that those schools highlight our successes, but, uh, there are others as well that aren't in that top four in our conference as well. That's, as I mentioned earlier, continually push these teams and have had successes in their own right. So I don't want to overshadow those schools no, and, and all, all nine in our conference that <laughs> certainly, uh, bring plenty to the table. So, um, yeah, I think, again, that just showcases um, the level of competitiveness in the Sun Conference. And and do. I, I do. I want, uh, I, I want to promote them all, too. You mentioned nine conference members, and that's where the number stands right now. However, next week, it's going to be 10, as uh, you have right. New College of Florida joining the conference. So 10 full members, and I realize that there are always associates and affiliates and, and different things that go with, with different sports and, and uh, who's able to – you know, have whatever sports at, at their university, but 10 conference members starting next week. Do, do you have to keep your eyes open? I mean, conference realignment, it's always talked about on the division one level. And I mean, obviously the eyeballs are there and specifically in football um, and especially in, in your portion of the country, <laughs> I'm sure, you know, that's, yeah. it's a big deal. I'm, I'm sure the headlines all the time, but <laughs> yeah. do you have to keep your eyes open for conference realignment on uh, you know, a fairly, regular basis yeah of course i think i think we all do you know that's part of our responsibility as commissioners um i think every conference maybe has a different vision on what that right number is to have in terms of conference members some maybe are are targeting higher some are more comfortable with a smaller more manageable number Uh, and you mentioned we're very fortunate to add new college of florida for the upcoming year um there's someone who was in our footprint there in sarasota so a great fit for us geographically and a uh, fairly new athletic program. Uh, you know, they were, uh, they started as an institution in 1960, but just this past year added athletics to the fold. Uh, so they've, they've only, you know, they're, they're very uh, fresh and young, but um, they sold us immediately on their infrastructure, the plans that they had, uh, the support that they'll give to athletics. So they were, they were a no brainer ad for us. And we're so excited to have them. Uh, with us for the upcoming year. But to answer your question, I think, yeah, we're always we're always on the lookout for others who might be interested in us um, in the Sun Conference and joining us or that we might want to seek out. Um, there's some mentality, I think, now in, in college athletics at the conference level that you're either you're either growing or you're dying. Um, personally, you know, I, I think that's uh, a little bit overblown. And I think that especially at our level, we still need to have some geographic focus. 
Uh, you know, we're, we're not going to be from California to the East Coast <laughs> in the NAI. Um, that's just, it just not, doesn't not make physical sense to, for anybody. To any of those Golden State <laughs> schools right now? Yeah, yeah. We, well, we love our friends at the Golden State over in California, but, they, you know, they've got their <laughs> their thing going on. We'll continue to have ours. But, um, but yeah, I, I mean, we're always looking for uh, members. We're not going to add in the Sun Conference just to uh, – add quantity. We want institutions that align with what we're doing, obviously, from a competitive standpoint and, uh, you know, fit the mission and add value to the conference. So um, anyone who we add is going to to bring something significant to the table, uh, whether they're coming to us or whether we're seeking them out. So you're always you're always um, you're always looking, I think you never stop, you know, uh, searching for new members. Um, sometimes you have to play a little bit of defense as well if someone is interested in one of your members. So uh, we th- we hope and, and believe that all of our members are really happy in the Sun Conference, thankfully. For, so I don't have to spend too much time uh, reselling them on the benefits of being a member of our conference. But, you know, there's always a little bit of that as well, I think, for, for every conference, just inherently just with the nature of college athletics, so much movement realignment on, a, on an annual basis that, uh, you always want to keep up and you know keep your eyes open to what might be coming next. I understand. You, I know that you came, and we mentioned this uh, earlier. You came from the the national office. Do you still have any roles with the NAI committees or anything like that, or or other folks uh, at the Sun Conference working on the national level? Yeah, no, we're. Uh, I've been fortunate to stay sort of plugged in at the national level. Personally, we've got others in the conference. Um, I currently serve as the chair of the Conference Commissioners Association in the NAIA. Uh, also serve as the vice chair of the National Administrative Council, which actually just met uh, the last few days uh, for our summer meetings. Um, so I've been blessed to stay, again, involved in a number of ways nationally. Uh, we've got others, as I mentioned in the conference, who are critically involved as well in other areas of the NAIA. Uh, Jason Horn, just uh, for our, the AD at Florida Memorial, just uh, concluded his term as the uh, the chair of the Athletic Directors Association at the NAIA. Um, Dr. David Hogue is the vice chair of the um, uh, the Council of Presidents at the NAIA as well. So. Um, those two play vital roles. Uh, Donnie Smith is heavily involved. He's the sports information director at Southeastern University. Uh, I pro- probably got his title wrong, um, but uh, he serves heavily with the uh, CSC nationally uh, with the uh, college sports communication department. So we've got a number of individuals who are plugged in nationally, which I think benefits our uh, conference, certainly to get our brand out, uh, to have people nationally seeing representatives of the, of the Sun Conference doing well, uh, but also gives uh, myself and, and these other individuals a chance to bring information back to our conference to help us to uh, adapt to what might be coming at the national level in the NAI and uh, you know, create the best lane for our conference to move forward in sync with those uh, with those trends or ideas that might be coming down the road. I understand. By the way, Commissioner, just to help, Assistant Athletics Director for Communications, Donnie's uh, official you. title there. I, 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 I still, what? SID is, is so easy to remember, but I, I know that they get some of the other titles yes. too. And by the way, I, of all those people you mentioned, I know Donnie, he, he does a fantastic job. So I want to make sure I uh, gave him a shout out there. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Whatever his title is, it's it's probably not befitting of the uh, the level of work that he does and the respect that he has nationally. So, well, okay. Then let me ask you this, and okay. as uh, we we start to to wind down our our time, and again, I'm so grateful for it. When when people look at what you do, is there anything that you do, whether it be in the role of commissioner or even outside that role that uh, someone might look at and go, wow, I, I didn't know someone who's a commissioner would do that. Is there any, any part of, of your life that's like that? Uh, that's, that's a good question. I'm, I'm not sure I know what people think I do on a regular <laughs> basis anyway, but uh, you know, one thing that I spend a lot of time doing that pe- people maybe wouldn't realize, I talk to coaches in the league a lot. Um, I think that, you know, those conversations benefit that we have 24 sports that we sponsor now. 
Um, each of them, as you know, has its individual nuances that, um, that you need to keep up with. So, uh, I spend a lot of time talking to our coaches. A lot of times it's our sport chair who's, um, who's nominated by their peers, but could be others as well, who I've developed relationships just to get a better sense for, uh, the nuances of that particular sport, what the trends are, what's going on, what the discussions are so that we can adapt as a conference and, and put ourselves in the best position to support them as a sport. So, uh, I would say I spend a lot of time, you know, having conversations with them, educating myself on what's going on to, um, to not only have those relationships, but put our conference office in a uh, position to be able to, you know, help help provide those sports with the best guidance we can. I really appreciate that you said that too. I, I like the the way that that you mentioned it. Educating yourself. I mean, you you hold a position that yeah. is among the highest, and, and I mean, obviously highest in your conference, but in college athletics, and you're still learning. And I, you know, that, that's a big deal to me because I, I don't think we should ever stop learning, no matter how, how old, how accomplished we get, you know, what, what the title says that, that you continue to learn and you continue to grow. And I, and I hope that your conference and those around you appreciate that aspect of what you do. So I, I want to say thank you. Well, okay. um, let, let me ask you if you would do this for potential student athletes and families or whoever that might be watching right now. Could you give us a little bit of a commercial to come play and come be a, a part of the Sun Conference? Sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think a few things. One, you're going to get a great education. Uh, you know, we've got great uh, academic institutions that are in the Sun Conference. Uh, diverse academic programs. You know, we've got uh, certainly medical degrees. We've got law degrees. We've got business um, education. We've got a, a first rate art school as a member of our uh, conference and anything you could want. So no matter where you choose, you're going to get a great education. Uh, it's going to be highly competitive. You're going to see some of the best athletes in the country day in and day out uh, in the Sun Conference. Uh, we've got some pr great places to go to school. You know, you're going to see Miami, West Palm Beach, uh, you know, the Naples area, um, St. Simon's Island, Savannah, Georgia, one of the most his historical, beautiful cities in the country. Polk, we have three schools in Polk County, which is one of the fastest growing counties in uh, the entire country. Just added a new college of Florida who's in Sarasota. So uh, not only are you going to get a great education, you're going to compete, but you're, you're going to get to see some beautiful settings and compete in some of the uh, the coolest you know places in the country, in my opinion. So uh, a lot of great reasons to come to the Sun Conference for sure. All right. And, and by the our, way, our, our institutions sell it great, but, uh, you know, as a conference, I think we, we have a lot to offer as well. Well, I, I was going to tag on that too. Your leadership is, is also a, a very good reason to come and to be a part of the, of the conference sun conference in the capable hands sure. of Dustin Wilkie, who is the conference commissioner finishing up fifth full year, a uh, little more than five and a half years in the job and another athletic year getting ready to start next week. Thank you so much, Commissioner, for being with us today here as it is Commissioner's Week on the channel, and, and we appreciate what you do. We will continue to promote and follow what the Sun Conference is doing. Great. Thank you, Joey. Appreciate you having me.